Hi friends, thanks for joining me. So today we're going to use um, Shortcuts a lot for, and we're going to do a, we're going to do text on an arch, and we're going to import an SVG, and then we're going to add more text um, as a flat underneath that. And so let's just get right to it. So we don't have to have any special font at all, but we are going to go ahead and use this thicker version of Arial. And over here, to do text on a curve, right here, you could just use text as, you know, you go in there and click that, but if you click this little button down here and hold it, it gives you this drop-down menu, the type tool, vertical type tool, type on a path, or type on an arch. So that's what we're going to do here. And we're just, let's go with caps lock. Okay, so once you're done with your text, go ahead and create this or click the selection tool and that way you can move it around. So we pretty much want to center it. And then we're going to import, let's make it big so we can work on it. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Don't do it like that. Over here, you can make it bigger and smaller and keep your proportions instead of mess it up like I was about to do. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I think that's the best way. It keeps it looking nice and neat. You don't have any weird things, but, you know, mess around with it to get the exact look you want. All right, so we're going to import following daisy flowers number two, one, number one. <laughs> And I'll show you at the end of the video where I found this um, design. Okay. Okay, we're going to make this smaller, keeping its proportions. And the cool thing is, okay, so I'm creating this for the nursery that I work at. And um, he's, uh, my boss is sponsoring his grandson's, grandchildren's, um, sports team and so they asked me to do shirts for the sports team and do this kind of like logo on the arm and I thought if this works out then and they've already asked me to do a logo for the um, company and I just haven't sat down to do it and <laughs> so I thought oh if this works out we could just lateral that over okay so we just went into import SVG we found our SVG and we opened it Okay, if you don't have an SVG, you're going to want to go to the trace image option and then use your PNG or whatever and, you know, play around with the different settings to get what it is you're looking for. But the best thing to do is to come in with an SVG to begin with. Okay, so now we're just going to go over here. We're going to click on the text and go back up to type tool. And that's just going to make it where we have this going across the bottom. Nursery. Oops. <laughs> Okay, and then back up here to the select a tool over here to the position and size, and we're going to make her big. Okay, that looks like that's right about in the middle, maybe a little bit more. And see, and this is where you would want to use it on your own instead of doing the keeping the proportions. I wanted it to look a little bit bigger. And so I might even do that with this. Let's see. How do I like it? I liked it better the first way. Okay. So we have our graphic. We have log cabin and nursery. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to object, select all, object group, and that's going to make it where it's all one design now. It doesn't come apart. And we are going to go over here and we're going to make it small. It's going to be on the tiny little arms of these adorable little kids. So I actually haven't 
um, measured yet. I'll have to bring one of the shirts out and, and measure it, but for to, for to, <laughs> to save it and send it to the machine, it's fine to make it small. It's great to do that. If it's too big, then the machine has a hard time accepting it. I'm not sure if this is too small, but I don't think that it really distorts it too much at all. If you know, we have to make it bigger on the machine. So let's go from here, file, and we're going to export onto the desktop and let's call this log cabin on arch. Oh, <laughs> jeez, fumble fingers today. Okay, so I'm saving it on my desktop. I'm gonna choose save and then click okay. And then the next thing that I have to do and you can sit through this or you can skip forward. It will not hurt my feelings. We're going to delete this. And I've got a list of names that I have to do. The names and numbers. So let's um, go back to the type tool. And it needs to say, oh, back into caps, E-N-G-L-A-N-D. Okay, select, and then their number, 13. Okay, then back over here to the position and size. I want to make it big so that it kind of fits what we're doing here. That name could probably be bigger. Let's see, how did I like it before? Well, that obviously wouldn't work, but I barely changed the 13, so I think I'm going to go with that, but that's not centered. There we go. Okay, so again, edit, select all, object. Oh, you know what? There's a manual way to do this, too. Just select the whole thing <laughs> and then uh, right click on it and choose group and that turns it into the thing too. So let's go ahead over here. I don't like how far apart those one and three are though. I think I might just have to live with it. So we'll, you know, cut it out and see what it looks like. Um, at the right size and if it still looks weird I'll just make a new one so I'll go up here to export and England oh, Stephanie save okay all right so this is something that you can do for um, your cutting machine as well as to get your files ready to do digitizing in SoArt. So if you do this, you know, for lettering and wording, you have to go in and you have to use the um, variable width satin stitch editor and play with it a lot, learn how how the program works and stuff like that. And once you do, you're going to be really happy because you'll be able to have full control over how how the design looks from beginning to end. Um, if you just use the regular satin stitch, it's only going to follow a line in between. It's not going to, you might get something decent and readable, but it's not going to look very professional. The variable width satin stitch is what's going to help you have something professional. So I'm going to see you guys over at the cutting machine. That's what I'm making. Th these designs specifically are for cutting, cutting, design. 
Um, but we'll come and do some, some more embroidery stuff on shortcuts a lot as well. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so I'm over at the machine and I've already went ahead and cut everything out that I need to cut out. And I'm just gonna show you the process that I did and um, then we'll go over and apply it to the garment. So hold on one second. We're gonna go over here to pattern and we're gonna go to save data. We're gonna go to the computer where I saved this. Choose the SVG. It's gonna take a second to retrieve it. I don't know why, it was the smallest design I made to do all these shirts and it ended up being the one that takes the longest to retrieve. It's so weird. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna click OK. And now I needed six of them that were four by four. So I went into the edit screen and I went over here to the size and oops so it doesn't really matter if you do your height by four or your width by four it just depends on how you want it to look like you know if you want your width to be bigger than four and your height to be four that's go with that but i'm i'm fine with my width being four and the height being you know 348 so one of the things you want to do um I wish that was more sharper. One of the things you want to do once you have, so this is for HTV, this is for a t-shirt. So we're going to take this, we're going to do six of them. Oh wait, nope, no, 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 no. I got ahead of myself. So for HTV, you want to take it and choose this button right here, and it's going to turn it backwards. Because on the HTV, you're going to, it's going to cut it backwards and then you're going to weed off the stuff you don't want and it's going to leave on the plastic film the stuff that you you do want and that you're going to lay down directly onto the garment and then iron over the plastic. So you'll see more what that means in a second, but make sure that for HTV designs you go ahead and this is mirroring, okay? So from here we want six of these all together. You're going to choose OK. And then here, we're going to choose OK again. And we're going to go right here to this button. It's going to help us sort it. And we're going to have it do... You can have it do any of these, really. But I think doing it... Because you're just going to kind of move everything around anyways. Like that, that's going to be so close that so you're not going to be able to cut anything. But we're going to click... Eh, let's cancel that. Because I have a feeling that's going to distort things a little bit. Just go ahead and pick this one. This one's the easiest one. So we'll click OK. And then we're going to take this and we're going to put them down here, leaving a little gap in the middle so we can cut up the middle. Okay, and these are ones that are going to be going on the arm, on the sleeve of the, the shirts. So, um... That's why they're such a small the size. So we're gonna click OK. And then when you hit cut, you wanna go in here and so you wanna, I have my blade set at one and this is a 14 minute cut and what it kept doing to me was um, vibrating my blade out of one and to where it was, it would like make the blade go up and I wasn't able to cut all the way through. And I didn't realize that was happening for a long time. I wasted so much material today. But um, uh, I put some tape on it and kept it at one. So that's just a little tip if that happens to you. Keep an eye on it. It doesn't seem to be cutting. Maybe stop and check on it every once in a while. You know, push the pause button. But so my settings right now, I have cut speed of one, cut pressure of four, <laughs> and um, and that last batch that I did cut out really nicely. So, But I would always start and do your test with your cut, cut pressure and cut speed at one and go up from there. Click OK. All right, so we're gonna choose cut and it's gonna show you how long it's gonna take. Okay, 
So this is 14 minutes, and in 14 minutes you should have a whole group of those. So six of those, okay? And that's the little logo that we did. So I'll meet you guys over at the um, ironing board, and uh, you can see the designs that have been cut out. It, it cuts out on white HTV, so you can't really see it cutting anything anyways. It You just see the blade moving around on top of white plastic, so you're not really missing anything. But I'll show you um, the end result here in, in a second, and then we're going to use a Cricut heat press to, to apply it to the arm of the shirt. Okay, so I'll see you in a second. Okay friends, I'm over at the ironing board and I've got myself a dish towel that I've rolled up about three times, you know, it's folded up and rolled. And I have the t-shirt the all kind of set out, but we can't use the press on the t-shirt because the armpit and everything gets in the way and it would just be terrible. So put a piece of towel under here and I'm sure that there's actual um, you know real things that you could be using this for okay so I went ahead and put that in there I didn't think you guys really needed to sit through me you know wrestling that in there I think you can tell what happened here just put it inside there and I'm sorry about the angle I hope that that helps a little bit. So we've just got the sleeve here and it's, you know, let's make sure that it's, the center is a little bit off from this because it folded at the top here. So we have to kind of know that the center is actually over here. And so my piece is four by four. I think it might be a little bit too big for these kids' arms, but we will see. Okay, I'll get a little ruler. I want it to be at least ruler width away from the edge. Oh, another thing we gotta do. I like to take it and line things up and pinch the middle on the top and the bottom so that whenever I put it back on and also this is why we we cut it backwards so we cut it you know we had it had it designed backwards and then whenever it cuts out it cuts out all this stuff and I've already weeded everything out and whenever you flip it upside down then you can see it and then this is also the sheet that keeps everything uh, from sticking to your iron so all very handy but that's why we do it backwards okay you know what let's just get let's just get handy here so five so about three two and a half yep that's about right so two and a half then we're gonna actually move down the word letters to make them match up with the ruler better. Okay, so we have our center, which we agree is here and is a little bit from there, so we know that the, the actual bump in there isn't the same. So from here, I always like to have another piece of cloth over that first part, whenever we first get the heat on it. I also like to have the heat hit the, the ironing board with all that heat first and then bring it over to this. Oh, I'm skipping a whole important step. Imagine that. <laughs> okay, so the most important step for HTV, well, I don't know if it's the most important, but it's a pretty important step, is to heat it up first, heat your material up first. I have the Cricut Easy Press and I have it on 350 degrees and I'm going to set it for 15 seconds and then I'm going to put the HTV on there again get it all you know lined up again as fast as I can while this is still warm I'm really sorry about my cat okay, okay so we have our middle still 
Where is where's my ruler? Bad time to lose a ruler. Okay. Oh yeah. We we're gonna go at about two and a half. And make sure that was right in the middle. Okay. Okay, so just want to make sure that's gonna be straight. Okay, and it's still really nice and warm. So we'll take this other dishcloth, just place it over gently, and then, like I said, let the heat hit the this thing, the ironing board first, and then come over and try not to get that corner part. Just try to, you know, the where everything meets at the top, the seam. Again, my setting is 350 degrees for 15 seconds on the Cricut Easy Press, and I am giving it a little bit of pressure. Okay. All right. So then, from here, I like to just let it cool, and then come back and peel everything off after it's cooled. Okay. So I'll be back in a second. Okay. So it's all cooled off. It should peel right off. And if it doesn't, you just put everything back on and go again. So that's starting to have a little bit of a hard time coming off. But let's see. We are going to iron this again. So we're just going to take this off. A little worried when it gets to the flower. Oops. Okay. Well, that one didn't want to come off all the way. Okay, we are going to have to do that again, and that is not a big deal. It happens, okay? Okay, so I've got it on 335 and rising, and I'm just going to put it on for 15 seconds, light pressure. Okay, and then we're going to let it cool. Oh no. Okay, good. We're going to let it cool and then we're going to try that again. Okay? Alright guys, so it's cooled off again. Most of the what we've already pulled off came off, you know, coming off really easy. But where we got stuck up there was the eye. I'm not going to pull on that same spot. I'm going to go from this side. And I'm really sorry about that cat. It's not my cat, it's my dog. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. We have it very, very nice and neat. It looks really crisp and pretty. So we're going to go like this, and we're going to shove that back in there. And we're going to put this over the top. And we're going to run that again for 15 seconds take it off, let it cool a little bit, and then we're going to do it again for 15 seconds, okay? You don't have to sit through all of that. This is done. I will record the rest of this, but if you don't want to watch to the end, that's fine. All it is is just me doing the same thing that I just did, <laughs> okay? All right, so I went ahead and put the um, towel back in here so that we have, you know, structure that out a little bit. Take our dish towel, put it over all of this, kind of remind ourselves where that seam is, and then we're going to put it back on here for 15 seconds. All right guys, so I went ahead and pressed it for 15 more seconds, and then let it cool and then press it again for another 15 seconds just to be sure. And this is what it looks like. It looks really nice. Wish there was a way to really convey how sharp and nice it looks.
Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> so there we go. So I only have four more to do. And uh, and that'll be the end of this project. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you want the link to the, the flower, I'll put that at the... Um, in the thing but it's it's on Etsy so um, actually you know what I'll go ahead and take you there on the computer in a second so you don't have to keep watching unless you want to see where I got this design from thanks guys see you soon bye bye Okay, so this is where I found it. I will include the link in the description, but I just wanted you guys to see that this is it. Following Daisies on Etsy.com and the listing says flowers in SVG. Let's see. Well, it says all of this stuff right here. That's what the title is. But if you find, look for her and then just look up flowers, you'll eventually find those. Or you can just go to the description in the, um, or the link in the description and it'll take you right here. Alright, have a good night you guys. Bye-bye.